Здравствуйте, welcome back to Russian Through Poems and Paintings. Today is day 116, and we're shifting gears a little bit today. We're still talking about prefixes, but uh, we're doing sort of some different topics, right? We've already covered all of the major prefixes, and we've talked about them pretty thoroughly in terms of their most basic meanings. Uh, today we're going to see some um, somewhat unusual variations of prefix motion verbs, uh, and then we'll talk uh, some more about additional meanings of certain prefixes that we've already uh, seen. Uh, so the first topic is actually fairly simple, but the problem is people confuse um, these forms with the, the prefixed forms we've done so far, right? So when we were adding prefixes um, during the past several lessons, we were adding prefixes to the base pairs, right? And we saw how those pairs uh, didn't always coincide with the unprefixed forms we learned uh, a long time ago and, and recently reviewed, right? Like chadit. Uh, and then we had ikrarkaiti, right, instead of the full et. We had yezhait instead of yezdit, right, and, and then yechit in the perfective, right? So those base pairs we learned, and we kept using the same ones over and over, were not the same as the, the unprefixed infinitives that we learned a long time ago. Okay, so today we're, uh, we're not really doing, we're doing something a little bit different. We're making some special kinds of perfective motion verbs but we're doing that by adding adding two prefixes, only two today, to the imperfective, uh, non-prefixed verb we already verbs we already learned a long time ago. So I know this gets kind of confusing. So let's talk concretely. So for example, let's take the the base pair for motion by vehicle. We had again yezhat, yechet, and we saw how that first form yezhat was different from yezdit, right? So we had to be very careful to say, oh, it's not yezdit. It's yezhat, and, and we had to watch things like that. Okay, today again we're shifting gears. This is a, you should think of this as kind of a special class, a rather specific and, and rather unusual type of perfective motion verb. Uh, and we're going to get two varieties today. One is going to mean to go for a bit, right? To do whatever motion it is for a bit, perfective, right? It's over and done. And then another type is going to describe a quick round trip, also perfective, kind of, you know, back and forth, fast, kind of a quick, completed round trip. Um, okay, so the, these, again, you should think of these kind of as, as special cases. They don't really fit into the system of unprefixed verbs we learned earlier. They don't, uh, they look, they also, we, we're not creating aspectual pairs from them the way we've been doing so far with prefix verbs. They're just a very specific um, form that has a very specific meaning. Quick round trip, and then the second one is, again, to do something for a bit. Okay, so let's look at the forms here, and you see that, again, the, the, the only point really we have to m emphasize here is that we're adding, in this case, the prefix s to the indeterminate infinitives, right? So, chadit, yezdit, biegit, not to chadit, yezhat, biegat, right? So, again, the second two uh, were, were, were different in the base pairs for ordinary prefixed verbs. Here we're just adding it directly to whatever that indeterminate um, infinitive would be. And we get a new verb. Again, just, just a single perfective verb. We don't get a pair with these verbs. We get a perfective verb, which describes a completed round trip. So, for example, schadit, siezdit, zbiegit. Again, note that it's not siezhat. That is a verb, but that's something different that we learned before, right? This is a special one. It means to make a quick round trip. And we're only giving three of these because these are the only three types of motion we've had that you would ever really see like this. I mean, could you say slitat? Uh, yeah, you could, but you just don't hear it all that often. And so uh, we're just going to look at the most most common ones here. Um, okay, so there's s, right? So these s uh, forms, they describe a quick round trip. Okay, the second prefix we can use here, and we've actually done this already, is po. Right, we talked earlier about how you can take almost any verb describing an activity, add po to it, and get a special perfective form, meaning to do that activity for a bit. And that's actually exactly what we have here. So this is actually not new for us. Uh, but again, we have to make sure to, to pay attention that we're adding these. And by the way, we, we could use any, any, any motion verb here. Um, but again, we're adding the po to the indeterminate infinitive, not to the, some special base pair form. So, for example, from chadit, we would get pachadit, to walk around for a bit. Plavit, to swim, or whatever, to go by water. Paplavit, right? Biegit, pabiegit. 
Right. So think about in um, in English, you might say things like, I'm going to go to the park for a jog or for a run, or I want to go run for a bit or whatever, right? Well, all of those ideas can be uh, communicated very simply with this pas bieglet, right? With a poor perfective. Uh, and again, you can do that with any verb. We're just looking here specifically at, at motion verbs. Okay, uh, so let's look at a couple of examples here. Let's start with poor. And uh, so, for example, on stal pochadio pa komnete ya piat lyog. Okay, so there we have a sequence, right? So this is a kind of driving home the fact that this is a perfective verb. It can be part of a sequence. He got up, completed action. He walked around for a bit, completed action. And he lay back down, uh, uh, another completed action. Dai djetim pa biegat pa parku. Let the kids run around a bit in the park, right? Let them run around in the park for a bit. Okay, so again, note it's pa biegat, it's not pa biegat, right? Okay, let's create a few here uh, and fill in some blanks. To walk for a bit, that's pa chadit. Again, this is very easy. Think think back to book one, right? Chadit, iti, paiti. We take chadit and we add po right to it. We don't need any sort of special base form. Pa chadit, uh, again, only the perfective. Mnie plocha, I feel bad. Nada pa chadit na svejem vozduchia, right? I need to walk around for a bit. I need to walk a bit in fresh air. Number two, to run for a bit. Pa biegat. Okay, uh, we, we blank v parki pa šli trenažorni zal. Okay, we have a sequence, looks like. So we ran in the, for a bit in the park and then we went to the gym. Mui pa biegali v parki i pa šli trenažorni zal. Three, to swim for a bit. Okay, uh, now again, it's not going to be, we're not going to be using plivat like before with the prefixed verbs, we're going to use simply plavit, right? Paplavit, to swim for a bit. Let the kids swim around in the pool for a bit. Pus dieti nimnoga, okay, dieti, plural subject, paplavayut. Pus dieti nimnoga paplavayut v basenie. And chitiri, to ride for a bit, okay, uh, so yezdit, let's take yezdit for now, pa yezdit. Uh, let's ride around for a bit on bicycles. Davaitie pa jezdim, right, that we need, we need the mu form with davai. Davai pa jezdim na vrusipiadach. Okay, there's a footnote in the book, and it notes that this, you know, you would think that this would be a fairly common form. It's actually not, right? We used it here as an example, but then we make this important footnote that there's another motion verb that we haven't learned yet. It's I, I call it an advanced uh, motion verb just because it's it's somewhat more unusual, although it, it, it's quite common, actually. We'll see that with a lot of these so-called advanced motion verbs. We haven't learned them yet, but they, it's not like they're never used. They're, some of them are quite common, especially this one uh, for basically rolling. It, it, there's one we'll learn that means to roll, and then it also means to go for a ride on a vehicle on something with wheels, or, or well, actually not necessarily with wheels, just to go for a ride, right? So that would be the form we'd, we would more likely hear in this instance. So save that uh, for, for I think, until tomorrow, and we'll, we'll learn this verb for going for a spin or going for a ride. Okay, um, now the second kind of, again, special verb we're making today is s plus an indeterminate infinitive. We get a new perfective verb meaning to make a quick round trip. Okay, so for example, мне надо съездить в Москву на конференцию. Now, remember, uh, let's compare back to our unprefixed forms. You know, there were other ways to sort of talk about this idea. Uh, this would be a kind of, a, in, in this example, a future round trip, right? So you could say, мне надо поехать в Москву, meaning I've got to set out, I've got to head out for Moscow for a conference, right? Now, remember, if we had used the indeterminate verb, мне надо ездить в Москву, that would imply um, multiple trips, right? Uh, that wouldn't quite work here because it looks like it's only one conference, so that doesn't quite seem to make sense, probably. Okay, so now we see a new way to get this idea across, not only setting out for Moscow on a one-way trip, but uh, completing the one-way trip thought of as a completed, perfective um, action, right? So again, you see how it's kind of a fairly specific, uh, but also quite quite common, right? You know, the съездить в Москву на конференцию. Or, давай я сбегу в магазин за пивом. So we say things like in English, like to make a run for something. Like I need to make a beer run or whatever. 
Well, that's kind of the same thing here, right? I need to make a quick round trip to the store to fetch whatever, right? So you can say zbiegać, literally to run to the store, make a quick round trip running. You could say siezdić, meaning to drive to the store, or simply schadić, which would be kind of more neutral, right, for an in-town uh, quick round trip. Okay, let's make a few to make a quick round trip by foot. That would be schadić, again, only perfective. There's no pair here. Uh, why don't I run to the market on foot, right? Davaya schaju, davaya schaju na rinak, right? By the way, I might mention quickly, just came to mind, this is also used often for taking a shower. Schadit douche means to make a quick round trip literally into the shower, right? To take a shower. And there are other ways to say that, but that's one way to do it. Okay, dva, uh, to make a quick round trip by vehicle. Siezdit, we need the, the hard sign for reasons we already understand, I hope. Okay, мне надо съездить в Москву завтра, right? I've got to make a quick round trip by vehicle, obviously, to Moscow tomorrow. Okay, number three, to make a quick round trip by running, that'll be сбегать. Again, not сбегать, but сбегать. Okay, why don't we, uh, why don't we run to the store to fetch some beer, right? Давайте сбегаем в магазин за пивом. Or, now, a ya proposal, ты останься здесь, you stay here, I'll go fetch the beer. Ты останься здесь, я сбегаю за пивом. I'll go after the beer, literally, right? За plus the instrumental, literally behind or after. It could also bring to mind chasing something, right? Pursuing something. I'm going to hunt down the beer to fetch the beer. Okay, so... um. Uh, again, we, what we've covered so far uh, are essentially all of the prefixes with, with a couple of exceptions that are we'll talk about later. Um, but uh, basically all of the, ba the common prefixes in their most literal meanings. And we've seen glimpses here and there of uh, examples where the, the meaning is somewhat more figurative, right? It's a slightly different meaning. And uh, we'll see, uh, especially in book four, we'll talk more about this. How And by the way, just as you continue learning Russian, you'll get a better feel not only for the very basic kind of concrete spatial meanings of these prefixes, but about, first of all, more figurative meanings. And then, right, once you get start talking more figuratively, you get a little bit more variety, right? So a given prefix may have its very basic meaning, which we already know, and then a few more meanings that are sort of more abstract, more figurative, and, uh, you know, and some, some of them may have multiple meanings, all of which are important. Um, so I'll just mention quickly as an example that I'm not sure we're going to learn right now. Pire, uh, we know means across, right? But it also means re, like R-E in English, like to redo, to rewrite, to reread, right? So that's another very common use of pire. Uh, so pirichitaj, piripisaj would mean to reread, rewrite, piridielit, to redo, piristroit, to rebuild, Right, so that's just one one example right there. So anyway, there is more to say about the meanings of these prefixes. Uh, now let's look here, and what we're doing here is somewhat more uh, limited in, in scope, right? We're just looking at a few uh, kind of special verbs, which we can just sort of learn as idioms uh, that mean something a little bit specific. Now the first one we already mentioned, nachadis naiti, means to find, literally to come upon or to walk upon something. Right? We dog is scarly von avaxalia, no takin yanashli. Right? We looked for him, but we didn't find him. Okay, if we add a sia to that, we get a verb which literally means to be found, right? To be found, that makes perfect sense, or to be located. Right? Very common verb. Vunyparskajti, где находится ближайшая станция метро. Right? Где находится станция метро? Where is the subway station found? Where is it located? Um, okay, with abhadit, we know that that basically means to go around. Um, here we have two verbs with sia, and again, you know, with with so many of these idioms, it, they can be impossible basically to translate literally. They just don't make sense. So we just kind of have to learn them and use our imagination, right? Abhadit sabaitis. I guess you could think maybe how do you go around with someone? How do you encounter them? How do you deal with them, right? So maybe you can use your imagination and think how this could go from a very literal physical meaning to 
something more general, more figurative, right? How do you treat someone? Он всегда обходился со мной очень грубо, right? He always treated me very rudely. Uh, this can also mean if we follow it up with BS, to get by without something. Okay, there's one where you can sort of think about it literally, right? To get past, to get by, as we say in English, without someone or something. Мы всегда обходились без твоей помощи и опять обойдемся, right? We've always gotten by without your help and we'll get by again. Uh, here's a nice one, относиться, отнестись. Uh, again, that one's rather hard to translate literally. It means basically to regard, to relate to. A fairly uh, kind of vague verb that's also quite common, right? How do you feel about something? How do you relate to it? How do you regard it? Very common verb. Мы хорошо относимся друг к другу. У нас хорошие отношения. Now, some of you, maybe you're studying международные отношения, right, international relations. Um, well, отношения, there's a word you may know. I think we even had it in book one or something, or book two, maybe. Um, that is the verbal noun from this verb, относиться. So uh, we'll learn more about that uh, in the next chapter of this book, actually, how to form verbal nouns. Okay, and finally, one we've probably seen as well, сходить, сойти с ума, very common. Um, right, it's used a lot just kind of in everyday, I mean, it's not slang, but just everyday expressions like suma, suma možna saiti, right? One could lose one's mind, right? This is so crazy, you could you could lose it, right? Anyway, the idiom there is chadit saiti suma. We could understand that maybe literally as meaning something like to come off, to come down from off one's reason or one's right mind. Right. Again, it, you see how it doesn't quite that doesn't quite work very nicely, but it's maybe one way to visualize it or imagine the Russian idiom. Что ты делаешь? Ты что? С ума сошел, right? What have you lost your mind? Что ты делаешь? Ты что? С ума сошел? Or ты что? С ума сошла, right? If we were talking to a, a female. Okay. So let's just take a few of these and fill in the blanks. Watch out for these now. Again, this is just kind of a sampling of some very common ones. Um, the meaning, again, you might have to use a, use a dictionary or whatever with some of these, but you can see that they are all prefix motion verbs, right? So in terms of handling these, conjugating them, there is no trick to it. We we should be completely comfortable with every last form of these uh, verbs here. Okay, находить, найти, so to find. Мы как-то потеряли деньги. Я надеюсь, что мы скоро их blank. Somehow we lost the money. I hope that we soon, them, meaning the money, the monies, plural in Russian. I hope we'll find them, right? It sounds like we need a future tense verb. Я надеюсь, что мы скоро их найдем. Найдем. Okay, number two, same verb. Наконец он blank, the ключ, the key. Он был на полу под диваном. Okay, he was on the. It was on the floor underneath the sofa. Okay, that could be the on the person looking for the key, but context is is and, and just basic human decency leads me to hope that this is the key on the floor under the sofa and not the person, right? Okay, so again, just pointing out that on, right? It could be a person, or it could be an object, right? A masculine object. Here we need we rely on context and certain assumptions to know which is which. Okay, наконец он нашел ключ. Right, finally he found the key. It, the key, was on the floor. Он был на полу под диваном. Three, находиться найти. Right, literally to be found, to be located. Наш институт находится. Right, it is found. Находится в центре Петербурга. Четыре, обходиться обойти. Right, to get by. К сожалению, у нас нет вина. We have no wine. But we'll get by without alcohol. Но мы, okay, future tense, мы обойдемся, обойдемся, обойдемся и без алкоголя. Пять, okay, relating to something. Относиться, отнестись. How do we feel about it? Как ты, how do you regard Russian food, Russian cuisine, or food, I guess is better here, right? Еда is food, and kuchnya would be sort of cuisine, more generally speaking. All right, как ты относишься? Right, как ты относишься к русской еде? Хорошо или плохо? How do you relate to it? Do you relate to it well or 
badly, right? Uh, so to speak. Shes, okay, losing one's mind, schadit, saiti, soma. У нас так много работы, right? We have so much work. Soma можно saiti, right? Perfected. You could lose your mind from all this work. Okay, Siem again, schadit, soma. Что за безобразие? Это футбольные болельщики просто blank soma. Right, these football fans uh, are, have clearly, they've simply lost their minds. This is a, my memories of the World Cup in Petersburg. Эти футбольные болельщики просто сошли с ума. Right? Seems like the fans were actually quite well behaved during the World Cup. I was pleasantly surprised. Okay, now, uh, one more little topic. Again, and we're kind of just looking at a few examples here and looking forward, right? Things to watch out for with prefixes. Uh, sometimes you'll get double prefixes. So we're going to look here at the most common example of that. Pra is. By the way, is is one that we haven't studied yet because it's not, it is used, but it's uh, it's not too common uh, just as a kind of regular, something we regularly add to all sorts of different action and motion verbs, right? Uh, but it basically means out of, right? Out of or from or something. Pro we mean we know means through, so pra is is again a compound a double prefix, and I think of it as meaning something like uh, like this right to 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 I don't know how to again translate it literally to come out through and sort of into existence is one way to think about it so it it, it has you see with a lot of verbs for like happening pronouncing right you're bringing a sound, you're uttering it, you're bringing it, I don't know, again, out, through, into existence, you're producing things. So that, that type of idea, pra is. Okay, so you can see that, that uh, this is used, well, generally, rather abstractly. Um, uh, although, again, even a verb like presvaidit, to produce, we could think of that kind of figuratively, figuratively or in a more literal way, right? You're taking something, you're leading it, Again, you're, you're bringing it into existence. You're producing it. Okay, so again, that's a bit more complicated, a bit more maybe sophisticated. Let's look at some examples. First verb, very common, very common. Right, to take place, to happen. Okay, so now we can learn that verb. We see it's a prefix motion verb, and uh, we should be able to, to conjugate that verb, right? What's, what's happening? What's going on? What happened? What will happen? Future, right? Perfective future. Okay, произносить, произнести. To pronounce. Как это слово произносится? How is this word pronounced? Right there, using it passively. Я не могу его произнести. I can't pronounce it. Okay, производить, произвести, uh, to produce. Эта компания производит смартфоны. This company produces smartphones. Uh, by the way, another noun, a verbal noun, preznashenya, you may have heard, means pronunciation. Preznashenya, which, again, that's the that's the noun that we can create from the verb preznasit. To pronounce, we get preznashenya, pronunciation. Okay, finally, one more verb, which is followed by vpichitlenya, right? Russians use this quite often, right? What kind of impression did something make? Uh, and again, we're using, I guess literally we could say something like to produce an impression, right? To, to, uh, произвадить впечатление. Ее жених произвел хорошее впечатление на нас, right? Her fiancé made a good impression. He produced a хорошее впечатление. Okay, finally, uh, another really, really common verb that's a bit tricky, uh, is, uh, the, uh, a special use of visti, right, the, the uh, motion by vehicle verb, um, in, its, in its determinate or its perfective form as a subjectless verb. And um, maybe you could ask yourself if you've heard these expressions. I, I think we may have mentioned them back in book two, but I'm not positive. But anyway, have you ever heard expressions like you move visiot, you move sigda visiot, we translate that as he's always lucky. Okay, but this is one of these idioms, again, almost impossible to translate. And we're using the verb here in Russian subjectlessly, right? Meaning there is no subject. In Russian, that means there is no nominative case. Instead, here we're getting datives, 
right? So we've seen subjectless constructions before. This is a new one. Um, so subjectless verbs mean that, or expressions generally mean that we have no subject, that is no nominative case, and the verb is in its neuter singular form. It looks like what a neuter singular verb would look like, right? So for example, visuot. Okay, that would be a one-word sentence mean, meaning something literally, and I'll do my best here. Things are going as if on wheels, right? Things are, things are going easily for us, right? Um, and again, that's just my take on trying to explain this somehow literally. Uh, okay, so visio, it means things are going well, uh, you know, um, things are working out, maybe things are going very easily. And then we tie that up to a, a person, right? Yumu, for example, yumu, dative, that would mean things are going uh, spinningly or something or as if on wheels for him, right? You move his yacht. He's always lucky. Non povislo. We got lucky. Perfective. Može to be a povizjot. Maybe you will get lucky, right? Perfective. Uh, future, right? Okay, and finally, prihadir sa priti. So that's another subjectless verb. We combine it with a dative, kamu, and an infinitive, and it means to have to do something, right? Just speaking of necessity. Okay, you may remember that there's a simpler way to, to say the same thing. That's with nada. Right, so very similar meaning. This is more, a bit more tricky grammatically, but also very common. She had to redo everything. Right, right. Uh, you could think of that maybe as something like it became necessary for her to, to redo everything. Right, they'll have to find a job. Right, or maybe it will prove necessary for them to find a job. Okay, so let's try some of these. Again, this this stuff is a little trickier, right? Uh, and uh, so these verbs are very, very useful. Let's try to learn them, hopefully. But also, this gives us a, more, a, a sense generally of just things to watch out for with uh, prefixed motion verbs, right? We know the forms, but some of the meanings we encounter down the road may be more abstract uh, or trickier in some way than the very basic ones we've learned so far. Okay, preschadit prezaiti. Let's say they still haven't heard what happened yesterday. Tell them. Они еще не слышали, что произошло. Что произошло вчера? Расскажи им. Okay, number two. Произносить, произнести. To pronounce. Как blank слово здравствуйте. Okay, it looks like we need a passive, right? How is the word здравствуйте pronounced? Как произносится... Slova zdrastvitya. All right, so maybe a tricky verb. We need the reflexive particle, but remember, we're basically working here with nasit, right? Shifting stress, kak preznositsa at the slova. Three, the play uh, made, it produced a huge impression on me. It made a big impression on me. Včera. Okay, so we need past tense. Piesa prezvila agromne vpichitlenje na mnya včera. Prezvila. Okay, uh, Chitiri. Last year, в прошлом году, ему часто... Okay, there's an imperfective red flag. Often, right? Часто. He often had to travel to Moscow. В прошлом году, ему часто приходилось ездить в Москву. Okay, remember, that's, an, that's a subjectless verb, so the verb form has got to look like a neuter singular form. So, well, what would be the neuter singular of prihadiza? Prihadilo, right? Prihadilis. Prihadilis. Okay, now some more examples, right? Remember, we're using this here subjectlessly to mean being lucky, being fortunate. Namtak blank. We našli хорошую квартиру в самом centre. Okay, we found a good apartment in the very middle of, of town, right? Okay, so we need past tense. Nam tak povizlo. Nam tak povizlo. Verb looks like neuter singular. Povizlo. And we combine it with the dative nam. And we would translate that as something like we, we got lucky, right? So again, look how you take a subjectless form, a subjectless express, expression in Russian, and, and invariably you're going to get some kind of a subject in English, right? Because English doesn't really have subjectless expressions like this. Not that I'm aware of, at least. 
Okay, шесть. У него опять нет ни денег, ни работы. Again, he has neither money nor a job nor work. Ему просто не blank. Okay, sounds like this guy is kind of a sad sack uh, generally, right? Uh, so we just need present tense. Ему просто не везет. Right, he's just not a lucky guy. He, he can't catch a break. Ему не везет. Okay, uh, CM. Давай поиграем в лотерею. Let's play the lottery. Может нам blank. Maybe we will get lucky. Maybe we'll strike it rich. Может нам повезет. Повезет. Okay, again, examples four through seven. Those are all subjectless. Uh, that can be very tricky because it's hard to translate literally into English. Hard, if not impossible. I would say basically impossible. Okay, so you've got to remember no nominative and the verb form used in a subjectless expression is going to have to look like neuter singular. So if you remember those two things, you can use uh, subjectless expressions, I think, pretty successfully. But again, they, they are tricky, as we, as we know. And like if we think back to a subjectless expression we had, the first one we had was uh, niet plus the genitive, right? And think back how in the past tense that was niebola. Niebola, again, plus the genitive. And um, that was probably very hard to understand the first time around. Again, now today we've just added two verbs that we would call subjectless in the sense that, in this meaning at least, they're always used subjectlessly. That means they have no subject, meaning they, they're not used with words in the nominative, and so their form is always going to be uh, neither singular. Okay, that's it for today. Tomorrow we'll learn advanced verbs of motion. Basically, that just means adding all the additional types of motion that we haven't seen yet. But these are going to work exactly the same way as the motion verbs we've learned so far. We're going to learn both their unprefixed and uh, prefixed uh, variants uh, tomorrow. Until then, uh, до свидания.